Back when I was a young combinatoricist, I recall recoiling upon seeing alternating sums like this apparent nightmare. But fear not, dear viewer, by the end of this video we'll not only prove this identity combinatorially, but we'll develop a technique for handling many alternating sums. Oh, and no, it's not the principle of inclusion-exclusion. I'm shamelessly stealing the title and idea for this video from an article by Art Benjamin and Jenny Quinn linked in the description. I've seen this method used in many places, but theirs is such a pleasant treatment. By the way, if you're unfamiliar with this notation, which I pronounce as n choose k, learn about binomial coefficients elsewhere first. Link in the... Perhaps you've seen this identity before. The alternating sum of binomial coefficients for a fixed n is zero when n is greater than zero. Maybe the first thing you think when trying to prove this is, well, that's at least obvious for odd n, since n choose k is n choose n minus k, so odd rows of Pascal's triangle have paired up entries with opposite signs, such as in row 5 where we get a plus 1 and a minus 1, a minus 5 and a plus 5, and a plus 10 and a minus 10, whose sum is naturally 0. If you proceed that way with even rows, the terms don't match up, but they do still sum to 0. So either we come up with separate rules for even and odd n, or we approach the problem differently. We're going to go with that different approach idea. Let's begin by trying to phrase the alternating sum combinatorially. We know that n choose k counts the number of ways of forming a team of size k from a group of n people. As we vary k, we see this counts all the possible subsets of a set of size n. Rather than thinking of n choose k as a whole term, think of the individual configurations that it counts. When n is 5 and k is 3, n choose k is 10. This term enumerates these 10 ways of choosing our team of size 3 from a group of size 5. Instead of thinking of 5 choose 3 as an unbroken set, we could imagine each individual situation counted by 5 choose 3 as contributing one configuration to it at a time. Really, we could do that for any combinatorial expression. It seems kind of silly to do this, so why break things down this way? Well, when we look at an alternating sum, we can distribute the minus signs to the individual things being counted, rather than the whole term. In our alternating sum, each subset of even size adds a plus one, whereas each subset of odd size adds a minus one. For now, let's cheat and remind ourselves that we know the alternating binomial sum is zero. That means that when we write out all those plus ones and minus ones, they balance exactly. What if we can find a way to match up each plus one with a minus one? How could we state that mathematically? To reiterate, this sum counts up all the subsets of a set of size n, where the sign of each subset counted is its parity, that is, its evenness or oddness. So for each subset of even size, we want it matched to a subset of odd size. That would balance the pluses and minuses giving zero. Pause now to come up with a solution for yourself. Three, two, one, and here's how I'm going to do it. From our n people, let's single out a special individual person, maybe the youngest or the first alphabetically, whatever. In my imaginary scenario, that's the star, the person farthest to the left. Given a team of people, the star is either in it or not. You probably see where this is going, but here's my matching function. If the star is on the team, remove them to get a subset where they're not. If the star is not on the team, add them. Hopefully you'll agree without too much fuss that this does indeed match two possible team setups. Also note that the matched cases have different parity, since the size of the teams differs by one. We don't even need to know which subset is even and which is odd, we manage to match an odd one with an even one no matter what. That gets the job done for this proof, but I did promise a more general technique. You all know that a math video isn't officially classified as a math video without at least a quick definition, so here's today's. An involution is a function which, when applied twice, leaves everything unchanged. 
If we were inclined to use jargon, we'd say it's a function sigma that maps a set to itself where sigma of sigma of x is x for any input x in big X. Essentially, it matches x with sigma of x. This is great, except that sometimes sigma may fix some inputs. So as defined, x can match with itself, which will turn out to not be a big problem for us. That's because we're interested in alternating sums where we want a parity reversing involution. Parity reversing means that the involution pairs a plus one case with a minus one. Think back to our last example, where our involution toggled the star's presence in a given subset. The size of the subset changed parity when we applied the involution. When we have a parity reversing involution, we don't have to worry about anything being matched to itself. Nothing can have both parities. Let's look at another alternating sum. Like we did last time, let's first try to understand what this counts if the minus one to the k weren't there. I'm going to phrase this in terms of things that are easier to animate, so I apologize to the star and the rest of the gang we were forming teams out of. Suppose we start with two strips of two n squares. Then we paint some number k of the top squares. That's two n choose k ways. We also have to paint the same number of the bottom squares. Keeping track, that's times another two n choose k choices. Summing overall values of k means any number of squares may be painted but it must be the same number in the top and bottom rows. Now we understand the sum without that minus one to the k term. The parity, that is whether a painted configuration is assigned a plus one or minus one in the sum, is the evenness or oddness of the number of painted squares in the top strip. Next, we need to make a parity reversing involution on this set of painted square configurations. A useful word to keep in mind when you're looking for a parity reversing involution is toggle. If your action can be described as a toggle, you may be onto something. A tempting first guess might be to toggle the color of the first box in each strip, kind of like what we did with the star. But if the strips begin with opposite paintings, then we'll subtract a painted box in one row and add one in the other row. That's not a legitimate configuration, because remember, the rows needed to have the same number of painted boxes. So we need to toggle a pair of boxes top and bottom that are of the same color. Let's choose the first time that the top and bottom boxes have the same paintedness. That way when we toggle, we definitely get back to something with the same number of painted boxes in the top and bottom, so it will be a valid configuration. Nice. This toggle pairs together opposite signed configurations. But before we celebrate too quickly, we've made an assumption. Did you catch it? We assumed that there is a pair of top bottom boxes with the same paintedness. Is that necessarily the case? Let's see if we can create a box painting configuration that the involution can't handle. If for every pair of top bottom boxes, we have exactly one painted, then we can't apply our involution. Thinking about it for a second, this is the only sort of case that can break the involution. Remember, there are two n total boxes per row, and since each top and bottom contributes the same amount, each has exactly n boxes painted. So every exception to the involution has the same parity in the sum. They all occur with parity minus one to the n, the number of painted boxes in the top row. That means every plus one configuration matched with a minus one, except for the ones counted by our exceptional construction. How many of these exceptions are there? Well, the top strip has two n boxes, choose n to paint. That's an easy two n choose n. And that counts them all. As soon as you choose the tops to be painted, we know the bottom strip gets painted exactly where the tops aren't. That's it, we finished the assignment. The sum of minus 1 to the k times 2n choose k squared is minus 1 to the n times 2n choose n. All the plus 1s and minus 1s added to 0 except the exceptions, which all have the same sign, minus 1 to the n, and there are 2n choose n of them. Let's go back to that frightening identity from the beginning. Yeah, that's the one. Our general strategy comes in three phases. Phase D description. 
describe what the sum counts without the alternating part, and figure out what parity means here. Phase I, involution. Find a parity reversing involution. Remember, it doesn't have to match up everything. Because of phase E, exceptions. Count the involution's exceptions, paying close attention to their parity. All right, time to face our fears. We have two n things, let's say boxes again, and we need to choose at least half of them to paint. Parity is how far beyond half of the boxes we paint. Let's stick with the easiest possible involution. Toggle the first box. If it's clear, paint it, or vice versa. And when does this not work? Well, we aren't allowed to paint less than half the boxes, so the only times the involution wouldn't work is when we started with exactly n boxes painted, and by clearing the first one, we dipped beneath halfway. All those cases occur when k equals zero, so they have positive parity. And how many are there? Well, we know there are n painted, including the first one, so of the remaining 2n minus 1 boxes, we need to paint n minus 1 of them. That's 2n minus 1, choose n minus 1. Let's do one more example to make sure that wasn't a fluke, and let's pretend we don't already know what it simplifies to. The sum of minus 1 to the k times n plus k choose n minus k times 2 to the 2k? What in the world is this monstrosity? Okay, okay, not to panic. Start with n things. Let's go with boxes because I don't want to learn any new animating tricks just for this example. We add k more boxes to the front, up to n, and leave n minus k of the boxes blank. That's n plus k choose n minus k ways of picking blank boxes so far. For the remaining 2k boxes, we paint them all yellow or blue arbitrarily. Two choices to make. 2k times means 2 to the 2k choices for painting boxes yellow or blue. Great, we've counted the scenario. The parity is the evenness or oddness of the number of boxes we've added to the original set. It's undoubtedly going to come up, so keep in mind that the number of blank boxes, n minus k, plus extra boxes, k, equals n. The involution needs to change the parity of the number of added boxes which consequently changes the number of blank boxes. Increasing the number of added boxes by 1 means decreasing the number of blanks by 1. Here's our involution. Find the first blank box, or first pair of yellow followed by a blue box, and swap. So one box becomes two, or two boxes become one. Let's move on to the exceptions. First off, there can't be any blank boxes, or the involution would have no trouble. No blanks means n minus k must be zero, so k is n, and all boxes are yellow or blue. Our result will have sign minus one to the n. We also can't have any yellow box followed by a blue, so all our blue boxes must come first. The only thing left to pin down is how many blue boxes are in our exception. There can be anywhere from 0 all the way up to 2n of them, so that's 2n plus 1 choices. We did it! The monstrosity equals minus 1 to the n times 2n plus 1. That's everything for this video. Remember the die method. First, describe what the sum counts without the alternating part and what parity means. Next, find a parity reversing involution. It doesn't have to be perfect but making it as good as possible helps. And last, count the involution's exceptions, paying attention to their parity. Once you try out a few of these, you'll be hooked. Matching is way easier than counting. So here are some challenge problems for you to try out the die technique. The d sub n in that last one is the number of derangements of n things. If you don't know what that is, I've got a couple other videos to introduce you to.